song about fat people. Well, it's not. It's a song about how fat people are going to take over the world. Well, I hope so. It's called Billy Banter's song. You just can't get the staff these days. I guess you know the rest, they all came riding from the bar, made them chips out like honey, it'd be party days, party nights, I had something to eat, and it looks like you might have a place to me. It looks like you're a nice girl, it looks like you're wondering, you can still get down to the end of time, be back in time for tea. Billy Bunter said, if you want to be free, just get out of my head, come back to me. Billy Bunter said, if you want to be kind, there's only one thing to do, so be still with your mind. If you want to grow old, if you want to grow old, Billy Bunter said, if you do what you're told, you can be like a child, you can never grow old. You can be like a child, you can never grow old. Well, the man who cried with laughing, he shook his fist and grinned and said, you're human beings, will be the death of me. And he told us all the go and sit for things when no one seen it. And he said some more, but it didn't make sense to me. And so I left the air to seek his after truth and made my way in search of magic potions and my thing with dinner. I found the guns on time, the sisters simply got away to mix some cocktails and politics over dinner. Billy Banter said, if you want to be free, there's only one thing to do, you can have a Billy Banter said, if you want to get old, things you let it say. And he took that double helix, he secreted in his beard by the second floor, he threw it all away. And four and twenty days all came down from Inverness to try and catch an invitation from the beast. And when they found out there was nothing they could repossess, the more fine disappeared into the east. Billy Banter said, if you want to be free, you got to handle the fire and come out to me. Billy Banter said, if you want to be kind, your mind. Yeah. Billy Butter said, if you want to learn the thing, Billy Butter said, Billy Butter said, if you do what you're told, you can be like a child, you can never grow old, you can be like a child, you can never grow old, and I never have, be like a child, and you can never grow old. <laughs> Monumentally peculiar, and it's actually if you'd asked me 33 years ago where I thought I'd be, I never thought I'd be up here in a retired chapel complaining about my health problems. Now this next one, I want you to pretend that I have a band up here with me. If I'd actually thought in time, I would have actually asked Steve or somebody to do it, but I haven't. So really I need a piano player and I need somebody with a really nice string sample. So you just got to... Imagine when I'm playing this. I've got a piano doing this. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. So you've got to imagine the piano doing that. And I've got strings really up. Ba, 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 ba. So you've just got to imagine that. Because this is a song, it's a sad good song. And once again, I seem to be, all sorts of things happened back in April 1982. It was the last time I was... That's lovely, because I just hear violin playing, eh? <laughs> hey, Tracy, do it, baby! 
my wife always tells me in these reconstructed days I'm not supposed to call members of the female gender baby or honey or whatever. But like I said, I'm just an old hippie and I'm never going to pretend to be anything else. Back in April 1982, I was in love. Come on, come on, Tracy, do something, do something really. It's all in G. I'll just do it acoustic then, yeah? Yeah, of course. We just make it up as we go along. That's basically what I've done my whole career. God, she's good this girl. Anyway, back in the back in the spring of 1982, I was in love. She was utterly gorgeous. I'm really pleased to say she's not here tonight. I was a little bit worried. It's one of the reasons I haven't played a gig in Barnstable for 30 years. She was. A few years younger than me, which means she'd now be about 50. She was blonde, she was blue-eyed, and she had a bigger to die for. She wasn't very clever, but that didn't really matter. I was only 22. Like me. <laughs> Don't put yourself down, baby. And so I wrote a song for her, and it wasn't until my first album, which came out again in April 1982. Everything happened in that month, and I read this song for her, and I recorded it in a studio in Weird Gifford. And then I got in my little car, and I drove all the way over to Barnstable to a housing estate not very far from here. And I played it to her. I went and knocked on the door, and I was a pretentious boy at the time, and I said, Hey baby, guess who I wrote a song for? And she looked at me with those beautiful blue eyes, and she said, Me? No one's ever written a song for me before. Come inside. Which was, of course, the intended outcome. So I went inside. Now, we've got young people in the audience here. What's worse, I have my mother-in-law in the audience. So I think I will probably omit the bits that Martin, that Martin wouldn't have wanted me to sing, talk about. The bits about slowly easing the cassette out of its place and sensually placing it into the cassette there. And I won't even mention the little red button. <laughs> and as the music you're hearing now came over the speaker, she looked at me in silence. And then when the song was finished, I still remember what she said. For God's sake, that was the biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard in my life. Go away, I never want to see you again. And I never did see her again. But I think it's a great video because I'm very fond of this song. I think it's one of the most lovely love songs I've written. It's called Beautiful Mutant Monkey. And it goes, <laughs> and it goes something like this. Beautiful Mutant Monkey. With peppermints on your smile Your attitude stinks like the green of the sphinx Of the eyes of the queen crocodile Beautiful Newton monkey Do they let you stay out on your own? My own in the state with the people was the dream on the blue telephone Beautiful mutant monkey A far out Madonna in drive You stand on your head You pretend you're dead With the man in the jar
was a dream on the blue telephone. Now we have to pretend I'm afraid that we have a piano player, which we
again out of another on the mine. By this time, I think Martin was so shell shocked by me. This next one, I actually wrote to him, and I don't think he believed me. I said, Martin, can I do a song about a brain damaged girl who's in love with Hitler? And he just ignored it. This one is actually about a girl called Unity Mitford, who in the late 1930s went to Berlin, it's a true story, and it's one of the few human stories from that time that's actually heartwarming in a peculiar sort of way. She went to Berlin and somehow managed to worm her way into Hitler's close social circle. And whether or not she actually fell in love with him or whether she was just obsessed with him, history doesn't really relate. Various historians have suggested one and various the other. But what is a matter of fact is on the 3rd of September 1939, when Britain declared war on Germany, she shot herself in the head. But, miraculously, it didn't kill her. And Hitler sent his private ambulance even though war had just begun, with Unity Method in it, across the German lines, across the British and Allied lines, so she could go back to London and be treated by brain specialists there and go back to her family. I don't know what this says about Hitler, I don't know what this says about the Second World War, I don't know what it says about anything apart from the fact that even the most completely evil people can do nice things occasionally. But that is a true story, and this is from the record that I made of the war. Early, early 1990s, it's called Unity. One summer evening with a head full of pills in a village deep down in the Oxfordshire hills. I lay by your graveside, I looked at the sky. who sits up on a stage singing odd songs about Nazi dictators and people setting fire to their farts and other stuff like that. I'm actually a grandfather. I have a family I love very much and I'm a grandfather as of last September. And I love my daughter very much indeed and this is a song for several of them. Baby girl, what happened to you wouldn't happen. 
It's not your fault that the man you trusted turned out to be scum. I'm so angry that I'd like to see him dead. But your mother won't let me tell the bastard apart, so I've got to write this down instead. I'm so pumped full of adrenaline, I feel just like a soldier going on. Baby girl, you called me late one night when I was lying in my bed. To tell me all about your hopes and fears and the voices in your head. I told you that I'd help you work it. Not just because I love you, because I I've been so far down, I thought I'd never get out anymore. But now I never felt more like a father before. Baby girl, the other night, me and your mother in the hospital canteen. Well, I hope you know me well enough by now to know I don't say what I don't. I knew things could get a lot, lot worse. So I went outside to try and cut a bargain with the master of the universe. I never thought that I would end up finding something I'd be happy dying for. But I've never felt more like a father. No, I never felt more like I had somebody send me a few pages through of it by email the other day. Jesus, it's terrible! It is the worst, most badly written thing I have ever seen. It is neither good literature or good smut. I've read more rising things than the Journal of Herptobiology, which is, by the way, something I subscribe to. And it's absolutely terrible. But something I actually worked out the other day is that each generation thinks that they have invented perversity. Jessica, this is the thing you said I probably couldn't say in public, wasn't it? Each generation says that they think they have invented perversity. Well, sadly, this generation's take on perversity isn't terribly good. This is a song written, my last song for tonight, it written, was written 50 years ago based on a novel by a man called Baron Leopold Seikert Massoff. Yes, the guy the word masochist came from, written a hundred years before that. It's called Venus and Furs.
Shiny, shiny leather, shiny leather. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the show.